Okay, one of the most valuable things that we can learn about in material science is the concept of energy and free energy. So what is that? It ties into the larger concept of thermodynamics and whether you're a mechanical engineer or a material scientist, you're going to have to take a subsequent course more specifically on thermodynamics. So today, we're just going to give you a flavor of it, okay? Thermodynamics is unfortunately not covered in this book, but it ties into so many things that are covered in this book, like phase diagrams. Phase diagrams work because of thermodynamics and electrochemistry, the same things. So we're going to cover some of that here. So first off, what is thermodynamics? Thermodynamics is the study of heat as it relates to energy and work, right? And why do we care about it is because it tells us the predictions, the energy predictions of reactions. And we know that something is favorable if it starts out at a higher energy and it ends at a lower energy, okay? So to do these predictions, we need to do uh, we need to know a couple things. Uh, here's the sort of variables that we need to know. We need to know T, that's our temperature. Um, the temperature will be constant throughout a system if it's in thermal equilibrium, right? Thermal equilibrium means it's the same temperature everywhere. Then we've got pressure, P, and the pressure we're going to say is constant throughout the system under mechanical equilibrium, okay? Then we've got M, our mass, V, our volume, and then U, our internal energy. So hopefully you learned in basic physics that energy can neither be destroyed nor created. We just convert it from one form to another. And that's really the first law of thermodynamics. All it says is this. It says the total change in the internal energy is just equal to the heat added minus any work done on the surroundings. So let's write that mathematically. U is our internal energy. So we're talking about the total change in internal energy. That's going to be du, okay? So du is going to be equal to the heat added. So we're going to use the uh, Q for our heat. So that's the heat added. So that's the change in heat, dq, okay? And it says minus the work done on surroundings. So imagine you've got a balloon. As you blow on that balloon, its volume can increase because you're increasing the pressure inside until it reaches equilibrium, right? So that expansion of pressure and the change in volume, that's the work that can be done on a system. So minus the pressure times the change in volume, okay? So that is the first law of thermodynamics, okay? Now we get to enthalpy. Enthalpy is a measure of the total energy of a thermodynamic system. So if it's the total energy, then it has to be the internal energy plus the work it's doing on its surroundings. So H is going to be equal to H, our enthalpy. It's going to be equal to U, the same U as our internal energy from, internal energy from before. But it's going to be plus P times V. Okay? That is our enthalpy. Okay? So what about the change in enthalpy? Does the enthalpy change? What is it equal to? We could take the derivative of this expression right here, the left hand and the right hand side. So the left hand side is easy. We just get dH, right? The change in H is now going to be equal to du. And then we have something that has two variables in it. So we have to do, I think it's called the chain rule. So it's going to be equal to plus P dV plus V dP, right? Well, take a look at this. Previously, we just said that du is equal to dq minus pdv. Here we've got du plus pdv. So we just added this term to that side. Well, in other words, this whole thing right here is just equal to dq, the change in heat. dq plus v dp. So when somebody says that the, there's a change in enthalpy of the system, we know what they're really saying is that there's a change in heat plus VDP. And if this is happening at constant pressure, let's say you're doing this all uh, in air at one you know, altitude, the pressure is not changing, right? So if this is at constant pressure, if that's the case, then this goes to zero. Okay? So in other words, the change in enthalpy of the system, dH, is just equal to dQ. That's probably what you learned in chemistry. When they talked about enthalpy, they were talking about endothermic versus exothermic reactions. When a reaction takes place, there's a change in en enthalpy, and you saw that as a change in heat. Heat either given off or heat being absorbed, right? And that is, in fact, the, the definition that you often see. Enthalpy of a reaction is the heat absorbed or evolved in transforming reactants at some constant temperature and pressure um, to products at some temperature and pressure, okay? And we call this exothermic or endothermic. 
Um, now, these enthalpies are additive and reversible. We'll talk more about that later. But really quickly, what should favor what type of reaction? Endothermic and exothermic. What should favor an exothermic reaction taking place? Well, think about it. You've got reactants turning into products. We know that these are reversible. And if it's an exothermic, then it's giving off heat, basically, plus you've got heat being produced over here. But if it's endothermic, then you've got heat plus your reactants producing products. So if you're in a furnace where it's really, really hot, which one of these is going to be favorable? Well, in a furnace, you've already got lots of heat there, so giving off more heat is maybe less favorable. But if your reaction needs heat, throwing it in a furnace is going to make it favorable, and vice versa. So that's enthalpy, the first part of what we need to know for thermodynamics.